Hello guys and welcome back to Archangel RC. As promised, I'm going back to planes now and for a bit as there are some interesting things coming out this season and the first right now is the new Volantex Phoenix V2, a 2 meter wingspan motor glider featuring an awesome plastic fuselage which is both more durable than foam and also creates less drag in flight as it is very smooth and slick. Unlike the Ranger 2000's fuselage though, it is not of the exact same material. Volantex claimed this one is made using the same stuff they make their boat hose out of and indeed it is a bit stiffer and less flexible than what is used on the Ranger 2000 so in a crash it might crack a bit more but it still should be a lot tougher than good old foam. For those who have seen my Ranger G2 video the assembly process for the Phoenix V2 is pretty much the same for the plug and play version at least. You need to add control horns, push rods and to screw on the tail to complete the plane. In terms of compatibility with other Volantex models actually the wings are identical to those on the Ranger 2000. Difference is the ones for the Phoenix V2 come with the flap servos pre-installed. After all it is a glider, its main function is to use those flaps. Also the canopy and the black cover piece are the same and fit on both models and also the tail is identical between the two. So if you have both you've got spare parts already. The fuselage of the Phoenix is a lot smoother and actually it is about two centimeters longer not counting the prop and spinner that should go at the front and unlike the Ranger 2000 the Phoenix V2 has a wheel at the bottom of the fuselage which is a nice touch as it would make landings a lot easier and safer even on tarmac and will keep the fuselage from scratching. On the inside of the fuselage there is this foam cover of the wheel which prevents dirt and debris from getting inside the plane during landings. I have to be honest the Phoenix V2 looks amazing and yes this is my first glider of this type and size and yet it just feels and looks good. On the inside layout is very similar to the Ranger 2000 with motor and ESC pre-installed and all the wiring done and waiting for the receiver to go in. Of course I did a few mods here when adding the receiver I also added an FR Sky voltage sensor and also added some cables for an external U-back because here we have a large plane with six servos two of which are flaps so it will definitely need a better bag than what is in that 30 amp Volantex ESC under the battery plate. Getting the plane ready for flight should not take long 30 to 40 minutes tops. Factory specs say it should fly with a 3S 2200 milliamp hour battery but since the motor is 1050 kV I thought a 4S one should be a better fit especially for the higher thrust. So I used the same 4S 1800 milliamp hour battery pack I used for the Fury Wing. Imagine how shocked I was to find out that the plane was super nose heavy even with this small pack. I haven't flown a plane with a motor at the front in a long time so I had forgotten how this should be. With the battery as far back as it will go I was only able to balance it once I removed the black front cover and used only the foam canopy so I guess that is how it will be flying for now. Other than that canopy there are no other FPV optimizations and I only think this canopy is here purely because the opening for it is the same as that on the Ranger 2000 and it is just cheaper to use parts you already have. Not that you can't install FPV gear on the Phoenix but its primary purpose unlike the Ranger is not FPV and I will try to keep it that way at least for the time being. Now at last it was time to get to the flying field and see what this one is capable of. Weather has been horrible around here recently and this day was actually one of the two when it didn't rain so I'm glad I took the opportunity to maiden the Phoenix. Sun not too hot, very little wind, some good thermals, everything you would need for a glider flight. After securing the battery in the plane and making sure CG was correct never forget to verify all control surfaces are working in the correct directions prior to throwing the plane in the air. Also check that the motor is working and just to sidetrack a bit this was the big surprise here. I was wondering how I was going to go about balancing this prop but when I throttled up the motor it turned out that the prop is perfectly balanced. <laughs> there was no noise, no vibrations, it was running smooth as if it had been balanced in the factory. That was nice. So on 4S I didn't even have to give it full throttle. I think around 70% was more than enough and the plane was off, easier than any other plane I've flown recently. I just tossed it at a slightly up angle without much force and surprisingly it didn't want to dive down immediately and kill itself. What a shocker! 
Now, it did require some up elevator and aileron trim, but after that it was just a dream to fly. And it wouldn't pull to any one side with or without the motor running, it was definitely a much different experience compared to the pusher motor models. In terms of thrust, at full throttle the motor would start to screech and stutter, I'm guessing it gets some timing issues, but up to about 85% it seemed to be pretty okay, and really you don't need more on this plane, on 4S that is. There is still plenty of power, something of a vertical to a point and the plane can actually do some aerobatics and was pretty stable even flying inverted. The Phoenix was precise and predictable in its behavior and definitely a pleasure to fly. Engaging the flaps caused it to gain altitude rapidly as they drop down and after that it is like the plane doesn't want to come down. Becomes very floaty, much more than it already is without the flaps but then I guess at 1444 grams for my current setup this probably isn't a lot for a 2 meter glider. I know there are other lighter options out there made with carbon fiber and other such light and tough composite materials but unlike them, rather than in the hundreds and thousands of dollars, the Phoenix V2 costs a mere $130 for the plug and play version and an even lower $94 for the kit version. I'd say those are pretty reasonable prices for what this plane is. But let's get back on track. A maiden flight for me just cannot go without the necessary tip stall test and just try to imagine my disappointment when this plane, just like the Ranger 2000, simply refused to do it. No throttle and full up elevator resulted in what I'd call a boring controlled descent while doing a tight turn and the moment you release the sticks it just goes straight and out of the spin if you can call it that. I even gave it some rudder in the direction of the turn to try and help it to get into an uncontrollable spiral but sadly that didn't do anything. If anything I even felt like some of the time it was actually gaining altitude but I really didn't expect much else out of this given that it has the same wings and tail as the Ranger 2000 and that one I already knew was impossible to get to tip stall. And I also saw one other thing, when flying around with the throttle below 50%, the Phoenix was definitely quite quick in the air and it was noticeable, doesn't matter if it was going with or against the wind, it was definitely moving along quicker than the Ranger G2 or Ranger 2000 were during my tests. I guess that slick boat material fuselage really does make a difference, of course I couldn't call it a day before doing a proper endurance run and to my surprise that 4S 1800 milliamp pack lasted 26 Six minutes of powered flight while gaining altitude. When the battery was almost empty I shut the motor down, dropped the flaps and thought I'd let it glide down and then land it. Guess what? The battery went completely flat and I swear it felt like the plane had actually gained altitude. So I just nosed it down and landed as fast as possible so as not to ruin the battery. Yes it is not as efficient as the Ranger G2 with 45 minutes on a 3S2200 milliamp pack but here we have a plane that is almost twice the wingspan and more than twice the weight so I'd say this is a good result. If I am to gain some altitude then drop the throttle and deploy flaps then wait for it to come down before throttling up for another climb I think this might easily reach an hour of flight time or even more on this measly 4S 1800 milliamp battery pack. I'd call that quite impressive. As for landings they are quite easy but since the plane is very floaty make sure you get low from afar as the moment you try to flare it to kill some speed it will go up and overshoot the landing spot easily otherwise it comes down gently and that wheel really helps to keep the fuselage nice and clean and free from scratches now i know what you're thinking but are you going to fpv slash autopilot this plane and on this i have to say that i don't know yet i definitely have some ideas but that front mounted motor is going to make balancing this with fpv gear and an autopilot tricky and you can't really have a much larger battery in this plane so reaching for those clouds might be an exercise in futility unless I take off from the mountain top the clouds are covering. So let's wait and see what I will come up with. For the time being, even though I have no prior experience with the previous version of the Phoenix glider, I do know its wings were the same as on the Raptor series and that plane did like to tip stow a lot. So I guess in that regard the Phoenix V2 is a huge improvement on the old design. I would say it is a worthy successor to the previous version 
version and most definitely a glider worth having if only for the pure fun of it. Some ultralight FPV system with a Vario on board would make it a rather good thermal hunting platform on a budget and you should still be able to get some good flight times out of it even with a small battery. Now links for the plane and all the gear I've used can be found in the description below and using any of them to buy literally anything from those websites would help support this channel and would be greatly appreciated since this is how I am supporting my family now that I am pretty much doing this full time. Another way you can support me is on Patreon, the link for that is also there. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you happy flying and until next time.